Hey everyone, I'm David, aka Coma2000. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is a video on how I think about making ambient music and sort of a tutorial if you'd like to do the same. So let's get to it. The patch we have open here reflects the way I view musical composition with VCD Rec. It has three parts. The top row is for generating pitch information. The second row is for creating the instruments or voices, and the third row is for mixing and mastering. In this video I will go over these three rows, with focusing more on the first one, that is composition, and I will make separate videos on the other two, otherwise this one will be way too long, so please consider subscribing if you don't want to miss those. And one more note, in reality these three parts don't happen in stages, rather parallelly or organically, as I make the patch, but for demonstration purposes, let's start with the first row that is generating musical notes. This would correspond to writing sheet music in an analog setting, but the most fun for me and what actually got me into VCV Rec is experimenting with different ways to write music kind of semi-automatically, what is generally referred to as generative music, where you set things in motion according to your ideas, and maybe tweak along the way when performing or recording the patch. That's at least how I do it. Here you could use any module that produces uh, semi-random voltages to provide pitch information. For example, Music Thing Modulars, Turing Machine, or Mutable Instruments, Marbles, for example. Let's give that a try, actually, just to show you. We can remove all these modules here that are at the moment responsible for producing this uh, harmony. Okay. And we have marbles here. And let's uh, go from the output of marbles to the volt per octave input on plats. Whoa. Okay. Let's increase the smoothness to constrain the notes within a wide, uh, narrower range. Let's go a bit lower, so reduce the bias here. Okay. We could maybe change the scale to from major to minor, just to hear what that sounds like. Sounds quite interesting, actually, but everything sounds interesting through clouds or the texture synthesizer. So let's go back to the original version. And the amazing thing about VCV2 is you can just use uh, Ctrl or Command Z and uh, undo whatever you did before. So let's do that. And here we are, back to the original patch. And what is actually happening here? Well, this is where all the fun begins, because there are so many different ways of generating notes for your patches. And you can start from pure noise. And here I have the sample and hold module from Bog Audio, which produces noise if you have nothing patched into the signal input. So here you can see that the output is just random voltages between 0 and 10, or numbers actually, random numbers between 0 and 10, because this is just a random number generator, but we have those here in virtual volts, and in VCV Rec you have one volt per octave, so now we get a range of notes within 10 octaves, which is way too much, so I'm going to reduce that using a VCA, which we have set now to approximately 20%, so, as you can see here, you are getting voltages between 0 and 2. We are within 2 octaves. And you could actually shift those, but because we are using the 12 key after that, which has an octave up and down button, you can increase the voltages by plus or minus 1 volt every time you click that button. 
but we are fine as we are at the moment, I think. And then this, through a sample and hold module, goes into quantum, which is a quantizer, where I have the first, the third, and the fifth white keys selected on this piano. Uh, that means that we have a major chord here. And next to that, I have the tuner, just to, that you can also see what notes are playing. And you see that it's D, A, and F sharp. So we are actually in D major. But how things are set up here, with the 12th key, you can transpose this scale to whatever scale you want to. So we are now in D, but you can go to C if you want. So let's listen. You can also see the notes here that we have C, E and G. So it's the C major chord. But now let's go back to D in a moment. Okay, now what do we have on the second 12th key? Where here is actually where you can play a little melody if you want. So let's try that. And for us, the bass is the melody because. The output uh, from sample and hold goes into the even VCO through tangents, which is our bass at the moment. And if you notice, we were playing as if we were as if we were in uh, C, but if you remove this, then you can play just regularly. However, if you want to do it the other way, what is happening here is that I'm adding the CV input from the first 12th key to the second 12th key, so basically transposing the scale on the second 12th key. Nice. I mean the sound. Let's actually see what kind of voices we have here in the second row. Well, we have plats through clouds, and it's uh, modulated with a bunch of LFOs. I actually just copy-pasted this over from another patch, which I will have a link down below. And our second voice is our bass, which we just played with. And quick, let's quickly go through the third row as well, which is uh, responsible for mixing and mastering. And I'm always aiming to finish the song within the VCV rack, so I don't have to do too much afterwards and uh, upload it straight to YouTube. And what I usually do is I play around with the faders here until I get the mix that I like. And then I have some sand effects set up here. Um, two reverbs actually. The first one I'm not even using here. And for the second one I'm sending the bass to the reverb to get some effect, but it's not doing too much here actually. And I'm also have, have the uh, EQ master here, where you can EQ each of your tracks separately. Let's have a quick look at that. Now we have track one selected, but if you go to track two, you can see on the analyzer 
that the low frequencies are much louder and that makes no, uh, sense because this is our bass and it's also mono channel and after the mixing I have a compressor here which is not really doing anything at the moment because we have the volume set way too low and even with the input gain set high and then finally we have the bass master which I usually use as a final EQ where you can adjust the high gain and the low gain so you get your final mix and it also has a second purpose which is that it acts as a spatializer to achieve sort of a surround sound more immersive listening experience by widening the stereo field and if you're interested in learning more about that i have a short video about the bass master on my patreon which i just set up so check that one out it's freely and publicly available and i invite you to join me over there for some more interaction and bonus content also Stay tuned for parts 2 and 3 of this video series, so consider subscribing if you want to be notified when those are out, hopefully soon. Also feel free to post any questions in the comment section, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.